I'm saying now is that I did not really know who you were. I thought you was a thug. It's dark over here, and when you How stop, about the overhead lights? I, th I thought it was Christmas. I didn't know. Okay, so you said you were arrested in the state of California, correct? In Ohio. What were you arrested for? Aggravated burglary, aggravated robbery, aggravated trafficking, receiving stolen property, theft, grand theft, felonious assault. I know, I know who he is. His brother died six months ago. Sure did. His brother Mark is that the one I shot his name, Mike. The one I shot was Michael. I thought, okay. He just admitted it. Greg, listen to me. You just said the one I shot, all right? So no, but you said the one I shot. It was the nail in the coffin. Come on, baby, give me one more chance. Greg, right, how many R is in the birth? Three. Three, okay. B R R R. Well, anything else, incorrect spelling. Yeah, I agree. D. Put a D at the end. B? Yeah. B R R R. No, B L. B L. It's like R. 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 D. D. Okay, okay. Let me show you. It's copyrighted. It's copyrighted. Guy, pal, trust me, you're not that guy. Okay. <laughs> Why? Why it's a dog. dog. How stupid is that? Okay. Yo, bro, who got you smiling like that? Like, mad happy. Hell, Yo, come on, bro. Oh, hold on. What you smiling at your phone for? Yo, who got you smiling like that, gang? Chill, chill. Nah. Yo, you really laying down smiling on your phone, gang? Like, it's chill, like that? Chill, nah, chill. bro. Nah, bro, what? Smiling and driving, bro? It's like that? Chill, chill, chill. Oh, nah. You've been scared of olives. Do you eat olives? No, we can't eat them down the line. Okay, now. Bring out the olives. No! 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 Sally. Sally, I don't have. Woo! 
This right here. This thing taking me back, man. So many memories right here, man. Back to school. Shout out to everybody out there. Went back to school, past the Lindsay here, to the whole off script, off the late family. Everybody checking it out for the first time. Welcome, man. By now, all of y'all are back to school. And I just had to reminisce tonight, y'all. This is taking me back old school. Y'all don't know about this, first of all, right here. Let me tell y'all about some of my memories, man. Back to school. Y'all see this basketball course here? Boy, back in my day, I ain't make the basketball team. <laughs> but I, you should have saw my trial, though, boy. What? I sat right up there, and the coach was calling out, who gonna be on the team? You, you. And I was sitting there. <laughs> but that's all right. I tried. Shout out to everybody who tried something before. Try it, try it, try it. Boy, what else, man? I remember, I don't know, I just had so many memories, man. Um, classes, uh, yeah, my favorite subject uh, was PE. Shout out to everybody who's PE. Put your favorite subject in the chat. PE was mine. Uh, and I remember, man, we gotta get this show started, but I gotta tell y'all this memory, man. This, 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 this right here, mind me, of the school dance, y'all. School dance. First of all, I ain't even have uh, a school dance partner, um, a date. But I came and I was just like, whoever I can find, you with me tonight, basically. Um, and long story short, I walked up to this one girl and I was like, how you doing? And I noticed when I said, hi, she kind of backed up a little bit. Um, and she pretty much, did somebody fart? I didn't realize that my breath wasn't really like, you know what I'm saying? Like dead. Oh, uh, and. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> Long story short. That was the end of the story because I walked away because I know ain't nobody fought. It was me, you know, it was this. But I learned my lesson. But speaking of lessons, speaking of lessons, can I tell you one more thing? Speaking of fought and lessons, y'all, one more memory, y'all, one more memory. I was at this thing and, and, and I mean, this whole cafeteria, everything was packed out. Packed, I'm talking about packed out. I don't know what I ate before I came. I told my mother I didn't want to eat before I came. She made me eat. And it was some ceremony. And I'm sitting in the back. My stomach starts saying, boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. And I said, I got to go to the bathroom. Y'all, right when I got up, that thing said, whoosh, whoosh. Right there in my seat. So in my mind, I'm sitting there thinking, OK, if I get up, I don't want the air from the back to make it whoosh up. So, but I also don't want to sit here and make sure everybody's smelling it, y'all. I went to that bathroom, that thing swooshed up. I, I don't want to get too graphic and tell you the rest, but just know there was some dirty drawers left in the trash can at that bathroom. Uh, I am so happy to be out of school, but I'm glad y'all back. Please don't have the memories that I had. All right, but I celebrate y'all for being back. Pat and Stephanie, y'all show some love in the chat. Everybody here for the first time. Let's get this party started right now. Yeah. You know what time it is. Off the lake, you can catch us off the lake. Off the lake, you can catch us off the lake.
is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me, no God. And you never will. You're undefeated. You've never failed me yet. Oh. Welcome back to Late Night Tea. Now y'all, I ain't gonna lie, the tea this week was real juicy. So I'm gonna need y'all to get something to sip on and we are gonna get right into it. The first topic we're gonna touch on is vaccinations and anti-vaccinations. Now I know y'all know about Miss Coronavirus and her sister, the Delta variant, who did not come to play. They did not come to play at all. So recently, Biden spoke on a panel about a possible mandatory mandate for vaccinations you know people working are it'll be mandatory for them to get vaccinations or they will have to do weekly testing now y'all i know it sounds crazy mandatory vaccinations like hold up yes y'all he recently stated that the delta variant is fueling a pandemic for the unvaccinated and basically you know Federal workers are going to have little to no option to get weekly tested and are going to be forced to get vaccinated pretty much. So y'all, it all sounds crazy. I don't know about y'all, but I don't like being forced to do anything. So how, like, how would y'all feel having to get, you know, if it was mandatory for everyone to get vaccinated with little to no testing options? Now, what do y'all like? What, what would y'all prefer? get testing every week or just getting the vaccination i don't know y'all that's a big that's a tough one but y'all let us know in the chat the next new topic we're going to talk about is drake's new album certified lover boy and kanye west's new album donda now y'all drake's album certified lover boy overstream donda's album in three weeks y'all and his album didn't even come out before kanye's but y'all, I ain't gonna lie. I, we we gonna settle this right now. We gonna settle this right now. I ain't gonna lie. Listen to a little bit, but I'm I'm gonna listen to a little bit more. We gonna settle this. <clears throat> Here's Kanye's. You know where to find me. They cannot define me, so they crucify me. How's the place when I leave? Come and play. Okay, Kanye. Okay, Kanye. I, I don't play. Don't play. Now we're gonna hear a little bit of Drake. Y'all, I don't know. I don't know. I'm torn. But let us know in the chat who y'all think bodied that album. Drake, Certified Lover Boy, or Kanye West, Donda. Let us know what you think and, you know, who you rocking with. That's all the tea for tonight, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you guys next time at Late Night Tea. Hi, my name is Jarius. Hi, my name is Legacy. And we are here to introduce Off, Off the, the Lake. Lake. Today we have a special guest pastor, and his name is Pastor Danny Prince. He is from Abundant Life Chapel Church located in Largo, Maryland. Fun fact about him, he likes chicken in the Washington football team. Yes, and we are officially back in school, but before we get started, we are going to play a game with Minister Randy.
All right, let's get it. Oh, yeah. It's about that time. We're back in school, and that means I'm breaking all the rules right here on Off the Late. I figured since we got off the late and we're going to be doing some uh, games, I figured we have a back to school game. And since we've been so down and out inside this whole time, when we're back in the classroom, I want to see whose brains are working. So we're going to play Are You Smarter? Then a fifth grader. All right, guys, this game is built like this. I have questions that I'm going to ask. We got some that on the first grade level, some on the third grade level, and some on the fifth grade level. Did I skip some grades? Yup. But <laughs> that doesn't mean I can't get some second and fourth grades. Everybody's going to get a chance to come up. Everybody's going to have a chance to prove. You like that? You like that, Jazz? Okay, I'm sorry. Everybody's gonna have a chance to prove their smarts. So with that being said, are you smarter than a fifth grader? First up, coming up, this guy right here. He plays no games. He quit recess. He told his teacher, come outside, cause I ain't going. I quit. Come on up, Jarius, come on up. You're gonna play today, my friend. Come on up here. So. Jerry, so you think you're smarter than a fifth grader? Probably. Okay. How's that? How's that first first couple of days of school going for you? Uh, boring. All right. Well, you know, whatever. All right. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? I'm gonna start off easy with you, buddy. We're gonna start off easy. What is? <laughs> if you don't get this, we're gonna send you back to school immediately. Fifth grade style. What grade you in? I'm eleven. Wow, if you don't get this, wow. All right. <laughs> okay, you ready? Does the word bone have a long or short vowel sound? Does the word bone have a long or short vowel sound? Easy in the chat. Get it together. What do you think? Short. What? Short. Okay, guys, we're going to send this guy back to the fifth grade. It is a long vowel. Have a seat, sir. Wow. <laughs> what school you go to? CMIT. CMIT stands for crazy, maybe in the dark. All right. <laughs> I just made that up, guys. I just made that up. Coming to the stage now, this young lady right here, she does not like greens. She does not like cabbage, but she does like broccoli. Come on up here, Randy Bike. Clap it up for her, guys. Come on, gosh. Okay, Randy. Now our name is that is our name is on the line here. Um, if you do this, I'm gonna ask you to pack up your things and get out. I'm not playing. You're gonna get out. Okay. I'm gonna ask you to leave the premises. I'm gonna ask you to get out my house. All right. You ready for this? Get beat. All right. <laughs> if you don't get this, if you don't get this, do you think you're just gonna have to just get out the house? Here we go. We're gonna do geography. Because I wanna do geography. Tell me what to do. You don't whoop me, I whoop you. How many continents are there? How many continents? How many continents are there? If you're in the chat, how many continents are there? But the answer is going to come from this one. How many continents? Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. What? Is this a multiple choice question? Okay, I'm telling you now. If you don't get it right, you have to get out. How many continents are there? Seven. Go! Oh, she got it right. Clap it up for it. Ding, 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 ding. Good job. Wow. I didn't think you were going to get that. All right, coming up to the stage, this young lady skipped three grades and then failed back three times. Come on up, Naya! Clap it up for her, guys. All right, stand right here. I like your Jordans, by the way. Pretty fresh. Your parents love you. All right, if you don't get this, you don't like pizza. All right, what? <laughs> what? Is a person, place, or a thing? A noun. 
That's correct. Clap it up for her. Good job. Man, you didn't get that. Wow. All right. So now we got somebody new coming to off script. She hasn't been here for a while because she's been under pandemic. And let me tell you something. Her grades were stellar. She's the first person I know to cheat on every test. Come on up here, Jade. Clap it up for her, guys. All right, Jade. How you doing? Good. Okay, what grade we in? A. Wow, you're old. You're old. All right, you ready? You ready for this? What are the three branches of the government? What are the three branches of the government? <laughs> what are the three branches? You got it. If you don't know it, you have to get out the parking lot. What, what, what? I don't know. Come on! It is. If you if you want to know, if you got it, put it in the chat, guys. You, you know, this is not no, a, a love lines here or, or, or hotlines, whatever it's called. All right, I'm going to give you another one. I'm going to give you another one. You ready for this one? I'm a little ready for this one. Beat. If you don't get this, you got to get out. Like, don't come back to church. A caterpillar changes and grows into what? A butterfly. Yes, correct! Yes! As you can see, guys, we give away answers here. All right. All right. Jasmine, come on up. I've seen your statesman here. Get over here right now. This young lady here, guys, she's 23 years old, senior in high school. She's doing her thing. She's going a long way. Jazz, hey, 23. Hey, hey, you know, some of us just like high school. All right. They're like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Hey, get out the camera, guy. All right, here we go. If you don't get this, okay. Here we go. Senior time. Where, where you think about going to school? FAMU. FAMU. That's in Florida, huh? You're going to be a rattlesnake? You're going to be a rattlesnake? All right, here we go. What phenomena might be felt on the surface when two tectonic plates rub against each other? What phenomenon may be felt on the surface when two tectonic plates rub against one another? This question sounds wild. Is it an earthquake? Yes, earthquake! You guys clap it up! All right, go back and sit down. All right. Last person coming up is Legacy. She likes to leave it behind. She does her self-promotion on our show all the time. Come on up, Legacy! With all your poems, all your spoken word. Let's see how far your spoken word is going to get you on this one. You ready for this? You ready for this? Okay. If you don't get this, where you live? I'm a little bit. Yeah, that's in Africa. All right. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't get this, you have to stay there forever, and no one's gonna come visit you. They probably don't even do it anyway. All right. Here we go. You ready? In what state will you find the Windy City? What state? The Windy City? I'm yeah, what state? What state would you find the Windy City? Someone's never been out of Waldorf. Windy City? Windy, Windy City. Windy. The, Windy. the Windy City. Come on, you know all these words. Are you doing your spoken word and they ask you this question? Windy. Not the, not the restaurant, Windy. Like wind, windy city. Where would I find the windy city? Yeah, it's like, oh, I don't want to blow because I just had some pizza. Hmm, I'm thinking. What state? Come on. Come on. You don't even know it, do you? You're, you're, you're acting like it's on the cover. It's really not, is it? <laughs> you're acting, aren't you? Come over here. Come back here. Come over here. Yeah, you, I'll give you a different question. If you didn't know, guys, the windy city is in Illinois. All right. Here's the last question for you. <laughs> what is the largest country by size? The largest country by size. I think a cameraman is giving you an answer. Look at him. <laughs> Russia. That's correct. Russia. Thank you. Go sit down. Go sit down. Okay, guys. 
that has been our game for today. As you can see, these kids need to be back in school ASAP. It's getting wild here in the pandemic, and we're so glad they're back. So we're going to see you guys in a few. I have no idea what's coming up next, but I know it's going to be something fun. DJ, hit the music, DJ. Back and that all skip band was tough. Yes, it was.
was. And next, we are getting back to school tips from Jasmine. We are back in school. Can you believe it? It's been a minute since we've been back. So I'm here to share some back to school tips with you guys to help ease any anxieties or worries that you may have. Now let's get to them. Going back to school and getting in a good routine allows us to get in the swing of things, especially since I know that we've all been staying up real late. And sleeping in is common for us, and for some, it definitely can be a difficult pattern to break. Enough sleep, waking up early, eating a good breakfast can help you get back to where we were pre-lockdown. And be patient with yourself. It may be hard for us to focus, especially since we're all used to staying at home, sitting in our pajamas, going to class, and studying alone by ourselves. Re-entering the classroom might come with an overload of distractions. So be patient with yourself as you relearn how to focus in a physical classroom environment. Anticipate the new norm. Remember that your school environment won't look the same as it did when you left. But it's okay, because if you follow these tips, then you'll be all good to go. Understanding that these changes are necessary will help you to adjust with ease. You may feel anxious or frustrated. The stress of an ongoing crisis manifests differently for everybody. You might be through the roof ecstatic at the thought of returning to school, or you may be battling waves of anxiety. No matter how you feel, you are not alone. If you're feeling anxious, make sure you're talking to a counselor or a mentor. Be flexible. There will be a lot of new changes and hiccups. Just know this is everyone's first time approaching school like this with these parameters. Stuff will change on the fly, so do yourself a favor and just go with the flow. That's it for me with these tips, so let's get back to Off The Lace. Yo, what's up, everybody? Listen, Offscript, thank you guys so much. I'm so honored to be back again in person because the last time I was virtual, and it is just amazing to be here. So, shout out to Pastor Steph, shout out to Pastor Randy, and all the whole Offscript team. I am so excited to be here with you guys. I'm excited just to fellowship, and I, am, I have a word for you. So listen, real quick, I want you guys to take out your Bibles, take out your phones, and go with me to the book of Exodus. Go with me to the book of Exodus. And while you're at Exodus, I'm going to say a quick prayer. Eternal wise God, our Father, we thank you. God, we thank you right now for who you are. We thank you right now for your word. We thank you for your protection. Now, Holy Spirit, have your way. Calm this spirit, God. Move in this place. Speak to your children, God. Give us a word that we can use right now in this very second and tomorrow and forevermore. So, Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Listen, so... Rumor has it that the theme is back like we never left. Back like we never left. In this pandemic, in this world with so much chaos is going on, last year, most of you all were in school virtual. Some might have done a hybrid, but you back like you never left. But I want to flip the script on you guys real quick. Can y'all do me a favor? Can I flip the script? Watch this. It's not back like we never left. It's back and we're better than before. That's where we're going with this. Back and we're better than before. So the book of Exodus, chapter 14, going at verse 11. And the word of God says this. They said, Moses, is it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Have you gone? What have you done to bring us out of Egypt? And we're going to jump to verse 15. And the Lord said, Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hands over the sea and divide it, and the people of Israel may go and the sea and the dry ground. For the next few minutes, I want to preach from the topic, back and better than I was before. Somebody text, somebody tweet, somebody go into your IG and say, allow me to reintroduce myself. Allow me to reintroduce myself because last year you were somebody else. You went somewhere else. But this year you're back and you're better than before. You did virtual learning last year. You did hybrid learning last year. You were stuck in quarantine last year. But this year and this season, God said, I am about to bring you back and I'm about to bring you back better than what you were before. You see, the last time I did off script, I was Danny. 
I was Danny Prince. I was a hurting Danny Prince. I was an angry Danny Prince. I was a resentful Danny Prince. I was in pain Danny Prince. But over this season and this year, I'm back and I'm stronger than what I was before. I'm smarter than what I was before. I'm wiser than I was before because God said, I am about to do a new thing in your life. And when God does a new thing in your life, he has to prepare you for the new thing. So he has to have an encounter with those that he has chosen. And so here's the thing. When Moses was, was in the, it was Moses was in Egypt, God said, I need to do a new thing in you. See, here, here's the thing with Moses. Moses struggled with understanding who he is because he, could, he couldn't get past who he was. Moses struggled really identifying with who he is because he couldn't get past who he was. Most of you are still stuck in a pandemic mentality. Most of you are still stuck in a stressed mentality and a trial mentality because of what you've gone through, what you've been through, what you went through as a child. And God said, I need to come and have an encounter with you. And oftentimes encounters look like a disruption. Encounters look like a trial. Encounters look like setbacks. Encounters look like pandemics because God God has to shake some things up in your life to bring out the old so he can bless you with the new. Somebody not hearing me. You're not hearing me. God has to now rock your entire world. He has to shake your entire life. He has to hurt your feelings. He has to make you upset. He has to send you to the hospital and do some spiritual and physical surgery on you to prepare you for where he's about to go because he says the new you in this new season, in this new year, in this new chapter has to be birthed out of some new trials, has to be birthed out of some new pandemic. So God said, listen here, Moses, I want you to take something that's so ordinary. Let me see this. Something that's so ordinary because he, he, Moses was known for carrying a what? A staff. And a staff in the biblical time was used to manage and direct the sheep. He held the staff out and told the sheep to go this way. He held the staff out and told the sheep to go that way. He held the staff out and told the sheep to follow me. But God said, I am going to use the very thing that was used as something ordinary, that was used as something that was so insignificant. Because last year, oh my God, last year to some people you was insignificant. Last year to some people you was ordinary. Last year to some people you was, you was out of date to them. So they kicked you aside. They brushed you off. But he said, I am getting ready to take the ordinary you with some ordinary things that you have in your hand and I'm going to make them extraordinary. I'm getting ready to flip the script on your entire life. So therefore, he told Moses, if you want to get out of the very thing that you're in right now because you have people following you, you have people looking at you, you have people that wants to be led by you, if you want to get out of it, you have to understand that it's going to be me, the God, the Holy Spirit, the Son of God that's going to take the ordinary you and make it extraordinary. Understand that God wants to bring the new. He said, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. He says, any man that is in Christ, okay, I'm a believer. I'm a, I'm a child of God. So therefore, I submit to my assignment. I submit to my identity. I am not the loser. I am not the reject. I am not the setback. I am not the depressed. I am not the hurt. I am not the poor. I am not the poverty. But he said, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. If any man be in Christ, he takes an old staff and turns the very staff that Moses was using to lead the sheep, and he says, you're going to set the people free with it. So therefore, what you see is a broomstick, which is normally used to sweep up trash. He said, I am going to use that same broomstick to sweep up trash, and I'm going to use it for you to lead people out of darkness into the marvelous light. I am going to take something that the world saw as so insignificant, that's so lame, that's so dull, that's so ordinary, and I am going to use it to flip the script on this off-script family and say that you're about to become extraordinary because of, your, because of how people saw you as so ordinary. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Don't allow this pandemic to keep you handicapped. Don't allow this pandemic to keep you paralyzed. Don't allow this pandemic to keep you stuck in your old ways because you were quarantined, because you had to sit in place. That don't mean you have to stay in place. 
Just because you have to spiritually and physically quarantine, that don't mean you can't spiritually and physically grow. That doesn't mean you can't spiritually and physically go because during this quarantine, God has to have an encounter with you. I recall in the Bible when Jacob, the brother of, I, the brother of Esau, the son of Isaac, had an encounter with God and Jacob was known to be a deceptor, being a deceiver, being a liar, being a cheater. And Jacob had an encounter with God and God met him one night. He met Jacob one night, and he said, oh, you, 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 you're dealing with some stuff. You have some stuff going on in your life, but I want to transform you. I want to make you new again. So he came up to Jacob, and he picked a fight with Jacob. Sometimes God has to pick a fight with you in order to get you where he needs to be. So he picked a fight with Jacob, and Jacob could have backed out. Jacob could have gave up, but Jacob said, this fight is the fight of my life. Right now, in this new year, in this new season, because old things have passed away, and you're trying to get to the new you, God is going to pick a fight with you. He is going to disrupt your life. He is going to interrupt your life so he can bring out the newness. So he stepped up to Jacob and Jacob stepped back up to God and they began to wrestle. They began to fight and Jacob said, God, I, I won't let go until you bless me. God broke Jacob's hip. He knocked Jacob's hip out of place and at that moment, Jacob said, God, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. I am going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. I am going to hold on to the promise that God has given you because here's the promise in the midst of you feeling depressed, in the midst of you feeling hurt, in the midst of you feeling anxious and anxiety attacks and everything under the sun, God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a child of the most high. You are a peculiar people. You are the lender and not the bar. You are the head and not the tail. You are my God. He said, I want to make you so significant that even the, your enemies will find you, uh, find you necessary to be in their life. Your haters say, I need you in my life. I don't like you, but I need you. What, what, what does the world think when, when even your enemies say they need you? What does the world think when your haters say they need you? Because God said, I am about to do a new thing in your life, and in order for me to do a new thing in your life, I have to destroy the old. So when God had an encounter with Jacob, he destroyed the old. He broke the very thing that was holding him down. He broke the very thing. He said he broke his hip. And when you break your hip, it messes up your mobility. It messes up your direction to go where you want to go. And God's saying, don't in this pandemic, I had to shut some things down so you can't go where you want to go, but you will go where I'm telling you to go. You will go where I need you to go. You will go where I want you to go, where I need you to go, and where I desire you to go, and where all old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. God used a significant staff that Moses had been carrying around for years. Moses was used to it. He's familiar with it. It's something that he knew how to operate. And he said, I am getting ready to use this staff to set the people free. He held the staff up. He held his hand up, and he parted the Red Sea. God is saying, the very thing that you thought was so insignificant in your life, I am getting ready to use it to break shackles in your family's life, to break generational curses, to break your family um, issues, to break everything that you've been dealing with. I am getting ready to use it to set some folks free, but you have to be willing to trust me. You have to be willing to let go and let God. See, we say it, and that's so cliche, but God says, stop, say, stop making my word cliche and start making it what you believe in. Stop making my word cliche. If you say it, then you better believe it. If you believe it, then watch God will show it to you and you'll begin to see it. He said, he said I, I, I'm getting ready to do a new thing in your life. He said, I'm sending you back and I'm sending you back into the battlefield. I'm sending you back into the trenches where, where, where schools are supposed to be shutting down, they're opening back up. And see how you went to school last year was virtual, but I'm sending you back physically. And when you go in, you're going to go in better than how you came out because you're going to go in, you're going to be touching the uh, locker rooms and the walls, pr pr um, claiming the blood of Jesus, pleading the blood of Jesus, saying, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the teachers. In the name of Jesus, I pray for my students. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke COVID-19. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke sickness and illness. In the name of Jesus, when folks don't want to social distance, I will show them how to social distance because I can be social distance and still pray the word of God. 
folks don't want to wear their mask, that's fine. You don't wear your mask, but I'm going to wear my mask because God said that I can be faithful and still use wisdom. So while you're not wearing your mask, I'm going to wear my mask and still pray to God. I'm going to wear my mask and still trust God. I'm going to be social distant and still plead the blood of Jesus. See, all of this is trying to come up against me and silence me and shut my mouth and shut me down. But God said, I am getting ready to open up a door that's going to invite you into the new season, this next chapter of your life. Trust God. He says, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared of the glory which shall be revealed. He said, I reckon that all the hell that you're going through right now, all the hell that you've had to deal with this year, all the hell that you had to deal with last year, all the pain, the tears, the, the cries at night that nobody saw but you, that nobody knew. Your parents didn't even know all the times you were crying. It said it had to happen. For the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed. God is getting ready to reveal some things. My brothers and my sisters, off script family, you are on a strategic assignment this year, even in the physical school place, even in the malls, even on the basketball court. When things are opening back up, please believe there is a protection over your life while you're operating out of wisdom and you're still practicing social distancing, while you're still masking up. God is saying, I am getting ready to physically send you out into the wilderness, into the trenches to do my work, but I'm not sending you like you sent you last year. I'm sending you smarter than what you were before, wiser than what you were before, stronger than what you were before. He said to bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are the light that some people need to see. And in order for your light to be seen, God has to break you. In order for your life to be seen, God has to break you up. He has to break you down because it's just like glow sticks. In order for the glow sticks to shine, it has to be broken. In order for you to be seen, God has to break you. In order for it to be broken, you got to say, God, here I am, Lord. Send me. If you have to break me, break me. If you have to sit me down, sit me down. If I have to go through setbacks, God, set me back because I know my better days is, is greater. My latter days... God, I need you right now. Speak to me, oh God. Use me, oh God. Old things are passed away. Old fears, old attitudes, old mindsets, old habits, old hurt are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God, I'm a new, my, my mind is new. My, my strength is new. My obedience is new. My prayer life is new. My word is new. So I'm not just reading the word because Pastor Steph told me to read the word or Pastor Randy encouraged me to read the word. I'm reading the word because I know I need the word. I need the word in my life. I need the word in my heart because I hide the word that in my heart that I might not sin against thee, God, that I might not doubt thee, God, that I might not say I don't trust you, God, that when times get rough, God, God, I will believe in you and I will stand on your word. As I close, I want you guys to hear me clearly. It's not back like you never left. It's back and you're better than you were before. Sometimes you need to tell the folks in your circle, allow me to reintroduce myself. Because people will see you as, as, as what they saw you before. They will see you as the old person. They will see you in your old ways. They will see you with your old sins. And you have to say, look, this is a new me. New day, new me. Trust God to move in your life. Trust God to lead and guide your path. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Your steps are ordered. Just trust God and walk with them. Trust God and walk with them. If you don't know the Lord for the pardon of your sins, listen, I encourage you, get to know Christ. Accept him in your heart. You are, we are nothing without God. I can't breathe without God. I can't live without God. I can't walk without God. I can't even clap my hands unless the Lord give me permission to do so. Trust God. Accept him in your life today. Accept God for yourself. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later. It's a heart thing. You can't have a new you without having a new heart. The Bible says, be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Everything starts with your mind. God, I believe. Accept Christ on today. 
Oscar family, I love you. Thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you for allowing me to just to pour out my heart to you guys. It has been a blessing. I love you. God bless you. Thank you.
Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Said you love us in spite of all we've done. You love us, boy. You love, boy. Love me. Say it to yourself. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves. Me. Oh, how he loves me. One last time. So he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Thank you for your love. That was so amazing. Can you imagine a love that will push past your pain, push past your trauma, push past all of the labels that we've given ourselves or that others have? Pastor Danny just brought forth such an amazing teaching and he encouraged us to reintroduce ourselves. And if this is your first time here watching or if you've been with us for a while, what I want you to do is really just take a moment right now and just kind of think about all of the labels. Think about everything that you've been through. This past year has been tough for so many of us. And for some of you, you might feel like you're at the end of your rope. But I want to invite you with us tonight to reintroduce yourself through Christ. And what that's going to look like, it's not spooky or anything. And if you're unsure if you've done this before, I invite you to do this with us anyway. And what we're going to do is we're going to pray a short prayer and we're going to invite Christ into our hearts, into our lives. And we're going to invite him to just be Lord. And so I'm going to ask you to close your eyes if you want. You can look up at the ceiling, but let's go. So Lord Jesus, we first and foremost, we come before you and we just say thank you. Thank you for loving us past our pain. Thank you for loving us through all of the drama, all of the times that we've messed up, all of the times that we've just continued to think less than of ourselves, Lord. And first and foremost, Lord God, we admit that we are sinners. We can't do anything right without you. We need you in our lives. And we wanna say that we believe that you are who you say you are. You are the God. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You died and you rose and you are alive and well. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna confess that you are Lord. We're inviting you into our hearts and we're inviting you into our heart space, into our families, into our schools. And we're asking Lord God that you have your way. Throw your weight around our lives. Throw your weight around our families. Show us again who we are and show us again what you've called and created us to be. And we believe these things to be done and true. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now if that was your first time saying this or your second or your third, it's okay, no judgment. What I'm gonna do is ask you to text OSVIP to 5155. I'm gonna say it again. You're gonna text OSVIP to 51555. And what you're going to do is you're going to get connected with one of our leaders and we're going to walk with you on this new chapter of your life with Christ. All right, so share with your friends, rewatch this part if you need to again, but we are ready to just celebrate you in the kingdom and that's it, you're in, you are new. So no longer are you going to call yourselves by those old names and those old labels. Remember that God has made you new and he loves you.